Yeah. Okay, back to our regular agenda item number 19, which is um, to approve awarding a sole source bid to Ellen Curtis and Sons for the purchase of 11 board thermal imaging cameras in an amount not to exceed $113,822 and authorize the trade. Uh, trade in of an outdated thermal Im of outdated thermal imaging cameras. So, so, so second. Okay. Any discussion? Chief. Looks like the director has. Something. Oh, oh okay. I, I just want to say I, I support this. I, 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 there are two positive things I want to say about it. One is I, I really like the way the staff report explained the rationale behind sole source and, and had some documentation so that I don't like sole source in general. But if that's what you have to do, that's what you have to do. And I think it was clearly explained and that was really good. Um, secondly, it was really clear why why we needed to do this. I've, I've asked um, and I, I had a good reception from staff that I think it's important that we respect our, our stock, our assets and that we know what they're worth. And so when it comes time to trade them in, just a routine procedure ought to be to just check and see what they're selling for on the used market. That would then let us know whether the trade-in value is, is right. And I don't want to be doing this as a board member. This is something that just ought to be part of the routine staff thing to do. And those comments then pertain to the, um, to the, the SCBA's uh, rating apparatuses later and so forth. But I'd like to just see that as a regular procedure. So, much good staff report, very clear, and uh, I'd like to keep that up. And, and the time to do what you had requested, I mean, now they're hearing it more and more often, so we'll, we will do that. We'll make sure we'll do it. Okay. Which is look beyond whatever the manufacturer will give us on return for items and, and see if the market's out there to sell these items. Or in another case, we were donating them to someone. We just ought to right. know what we're donating and, and so forth. Right. Okay. So point well taken. Thank you. Thanks, Chuck. Any other comments or questions? No questions. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. That was a unanimous decision. Thank you. Thank you. Agenda item number 20 is to um, adopt a resolution awarding a bid to municipal emergency services for the purchase of Scott a scuba pack cylinders, identifiers, and masks not to exceed $442,634.84. So moves. <laughs> Any discussion? Uh, again, I have, if you look at page two of this, the last paragraph um, before the attachment, um, there's a sentence here which, as I understand from the questions I asked, it is not effectively true over here. That is, it says, due to changes in the program structure, some expenditures will be postponed until the next fiscal year. As I understand, nothing's being postponed here. This is all going to be bought at one time. That's correct. Okay. And this goes to the, one of the issues that I have for the, for the um, finance committee is to review our capital budgeting procedure, making the distinction between capital items and operating items and so forth. I support this. I think the report addressed it well. And I think uh, Chief Stevens did a good job. I was trying to understand how much equipment each person or each engine needed. And he did a very good job of laying that out. Our board members should have received copies of that, too. And it just helps us understand in the future how do we account for this and how do we account for the replacement of this 10 years down the road or eight years down the road or whenever it is that we replace it. These are obviously very important for the safety and health of the firefighters. It's something we absolutely have to have. Right. And um, it, I think it's something we should be providing for for the next 50 years, that is the replacement of these, either when new technology comes online or when the equipment becomes worn and unusable. Mm -hmm. okay. Any other questions or comments? Okay. All in favor of this motion? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Unanimous? Thank you. I think Peter used that out there. Okay, item number 21, which is more informational. It's the update on the un unmanned aircraft system policies and procedures. So, um, Carol, the chief, and Chief Bramley, if you all care to. Let me, uh, brief, brief. Yeah, let me give you a quick, I mean, the policies are there. There's a newer version that was sent to you as well that took some of the comments 
from both uh, the directors as well as law enforcement that, that we sent this to as well. And again, you know, what we tried to do here, if I can remind you and everybody else in the room, is we first asked the question from the board, then brought this to a public meeting that we were looking at this type of a piece of equipment, and uh, then we moved forward with strategically how we would approach it, and then we promised that we would come back with draft policy. So we're not asking for your approval, we're just keeping you informed on the time continuum of how this is going. Chief Rayoni can speak to exactly what's going on. We've also worked out and received a um, loaner uh, UAS, which was flown today and will hopefully be demonstrated for you next month. But we're actively pursuing, uh, you know, the, the proper uh, certifications through the uh, FAA as well. And I'll let Frank take it from there and see if Director Carpenter's got a question as well. So either, either one. For the record, we flew it indoors, so we don't violate any FAA rules, so it was not utilized outdoors. Since we don't have our certificate of authority yet from the FAA, we're in the process of getting that right now. We had a, a pilot, an experienced pilot come in and fly it for us uh, inside, and that's pretty much it. And we have a trailer to show you for next month's presentation, and we may show you by the end of this meeting or not. Depends on how long this goes. Thanks. Trailer or a trailer? A trailer, a video trailer. Video trailer. Video trailer. Oh, trailer. A video trailer. indoor flight Ooh, in the geezer. apparatus room, down the hallway, inside another room, uh, being operated, videotape, Channel 7 News, videotaping the whole thing. Yeah, I have a question. Um, if you look at attachment A, and, and the section I'm concerned about is uh, the authorized missions for use are item 11 concerns me. I am incredibly impressed with the fact that we as a fire district have really gone public on this and, and asked for input, etc. Uh, there have been lots of concerns uh, when police agencies and other people have wanted to do drones because they basically were doing stuff uh, outside of public scrutiny, etc. I worry that the language in 11 uh, basically puts us on the hook for providing support for police agencies who themselves uh, could not get approval from their elected bodies to, to operate drones. And I wonder if you can address, you know, would we be disadvantaged if we struck item 11? Do I have that one or are you? Part of it? Yes, and part of it not. Well, I would certainly, you know, talk about, you know, <clears throat> apprehension of armed, dangerous, and or violent fleeing suspects and high-risk search warrants falls outside the scope of the mission of our district as far as I'm concerned. I agree that the public safety and life preservation missions to include uh, barricaded suspects, hostage situations, active shooters, because those are those are incidents to which we are called to respond. But the second half of that bothers me. And I would welcome other people's thoughts on that. I agree with you. Um, I'd like, like to also add something too. Okay. Uh, being a former law enforcement person, I totally agree with you um, to omit that. But the uh, under the privacy of rights and uh, concerns, uh, which that's uh, 370.7.1. Uh, it's kind of like a, like a catch-all type phrase, and I know it's a boilerplate generic phrase uh, that was, um, I've read this before in other publications, so uh, I kind of know what we might be opening ourselves up for for that. Uh, I think. What, what, what would we be opening ourselves to? Excuse me? What would we be opening ourselves to? Well, it says, you know, we should have some type of stated policies and procedures in place, actual years of retention of records, if any. And we should kind of spell it out that, of course, we're going to protect. Uh, individual civil rights and, and so on, but I think we need to be more specific under that section. 
the department has a retention policy right now. We, we put it into place with our plans and our reception. That's the policy we utilize, the department's retention policy for records. Which is what, five years? Five years. And, right. And, and except I think for, we should just put that Except in for here. the buildings, except for specific buildings to the life of the property if it's... Right. It's and I think we should just put that in there. Okay. That's all. It, just, okay. just to state it as such, so that it's not left open as an open door. Sure. Statement. That's all. Can I just ask, because I, I want to be sure I know what you're talking about. We're talking about like a videotape, is that what you're talking about? Well, we don't... I don't know what the I don't is. know what's good at, what type of uh, drone you're going to purchase. UAS. So, it, does it have any recording capabilities at all? Yes, sir. <laughs> okay, well then it does. Well then so we could have recording to the records. Right. It's, vid it's video and sound. Correct, so we're going to have data. In the future, thermal imaging. And uh, just, I would say just to state it. Sure. Because I think Menlo Park has a year where your ordinance was with the with the uh, license plate readers. I think by ordinance, it's, it's six months. So, which is contrary to state law, but uh, it's Menlo Park. <laughs> <laughs> they can legislate what they want. <laughs> It's not, it's not and we don't want to go into that. It's not contrary to state law. Well, 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 no, it's, it's different than state law. Well, it's... It doesn't I think there's law. some constitutionality there. I, I don't want to go into that. So, if, if we could just put that five years... And we also have some obligations with the FAA to keep our flight records. Right, exactly. We have, we have to fall under their federal regulations, so we have to fall within their scope and the state scope. You can make it more restrictive, but not less. Do you want to add that part of the FAA stuff too? Um, no, I just think think we just need to have what the what our actual retention and data uh, period is, which is the five year one, which is the state one. Okay. As other agencies have others. Okay, any other yeah. yes, Chuck? I just have a question. Could you tell us uh, a little bit more about the training? How much does it cost to become a pilot and how often does that have to be recertified? Currently, to become a pilot to run this, you have to go to the FAA ground school, pass the FAA ground school examination. You have to pass a class two medical examination, and that requires you to go every two years for a class two medical exam, which is less restrictive than our current NFPA uh, requirements, but nevertheless, you have to go to certified FAA physician to acquire that. And then our, we're developing with uh, uh, DGI, a training program that's similar to the fire service in, in a, a task book format and we have a person who will instruct us working directly with, with them and a consultant in, in uh, Minnesota and a trainer here. So we would do training in-house you're saying? So we have to go to a, a recognized FAA ground school that's offered at San Carlos Airport. How much is that? 230 to $250 for the ground school and X amount of hours and then Another, I think, fifty dollars for the test and the books for it, and you can do it online as well. But it's better to do it, and you have to do the full, formal ground school, not the modified version. It's if you're becoming a pilot, everything you two gentlemen have gone through, and I've gone through, you have to go through the whole process. It's not a, it's not a quick. Thing. So if you have a pilot's license, you have to do it over. No, if you have a pilot's license and you're, and you're still current, current with your. Two Class two, you're, you're good to go. And you just have to go through the training process. And we're, once again, we're leading, leading with developing a whole training program, working with the manufacturer. No one else has a program out there yet. And we're only one of two agencies in the state going for the process. The other is a Southern California uh, law enforcement agency, but we're the only fire agency in the state and the only one in Northern California. And there's nine other fire agencies across the country that are going for it. The same process we are at their COA. Would would the would the fi a firefighter have to take both medical exams, or would the one of them substitute for the no, other? They they have to take both because the one comes from the FAA, only the FAA recognized physician can authorize and give that medical examination with an authorization code that has to go through the process. And there happens to be two at San Carlos Airport. Two in Los Altos, and the rest are spread way across the area. It's a two-year uh, two class. Two class two two year year year. Year. It's a two-year, and it's 100, 
thirty, mid thirty dollars. No, but I mean it, it's it, it's good for two years. Yes, sir. Good for two years. And neither we can't utilize the same for our uh, for our department physicals, although much of it's the same. You could not use it. Thank you. We tried that last time. We'll have uh, more next month again. We do the demo in terms of you know Frank's been working on the cost and sheets. I mean, it's a work in progress. How many people do you expect to uh, train to do this? Uh, they have to work in teams of two. You have to have a pilot and a spotter working together, both train to the same level. And we're looking initially at six. And then also with a private, possibly having a private person work under our COA, who's also our instructor, to come in and, and work with us. Possibility. We're also got the insurance issue, which we've, all this will come out next month. Yeah. Along and, the video. And I would also mark off the observation. I'm reminded of when <clears throat> the USR system made the decision that they were going to inquire transport for the USAR teams. And it was California Task Force 3 that stood up and we basically set the standard and that was what then was adopted by FEMA for all of the transport vehicles across the country. The military, for example, has people who are pilots <coughs> and who get flight physicals from physicians who are not FAA physicians. And, and the FAA recognizes that. And I think that because of the leadership role we're taking here, very real possibility that we can say to the FAA, in lieu of a class two medical, if you pass the NFPA medical, that's an equivalent. And so by being at the forefront, we may be able to help set those standards in a way that it makes it easier for us to comply, but will in fact comply with an even higher standard. Right now we're looking to rewrite the laws on this whole process around the current administration. By the time they write it, if they came out tomorrow, it would be two years before they get implemented. And we are part of the process with the manufacturers and the FAA. We're at the tip of the spear, yeah. putting yeah. this whole process yeah. together. You know, right now, there's a proposal that the FAA has been kicking around for a couple of years for Class three medicals, where right now for a private pilot of a powered airplane, you have to go to an FAA physician. But if you're a private pilot flying a glider, you can self-certify and say, you know, I, and basically it's sort of the automobile standard. If you if you can qualify to drive an automobile, you can you can fly a glider. And and my sense is that over time, that that same thing's going to happen with the UAV thing. That they're going to recognize that. Uh, the standard that they've set is, is, is higher than is necessary because the, the risk to the people on the ground from somebody who has already passed the NFPA exam are, are close to non-existent. So by being at the forefront of this, I think we will help set that policy. We are writing the guidelines. There's a lot of agencies waiting to see where we go with it. The reality is we're jumping through a lot of hoops, and by the time we're done, be a lot less stringent for those coming behind us, but we'll have already blazed the path. Frank, I would just suggest that in your discussions with the FAA, that you suggest to them that they might want to offer that as an alternative qualification to a class two. Um, the bureaucrats want protection. And, and if you say, look, here's a higher standard, um, you know, why don't you write that in as an alternative, just as they have with military pilots? Um, they may well grab that and say, yeah. We're going down that path. We've already discussed it. Great. Okay. Chuck? Hey, one last question for the Chief. Yes. It, could this, could this um, uh, drone be used on a, mm -hmm. a FEMA uh, um, call-out and would, would the district be reimbursed for its use? It could if they accept it on the equipment list. So it's not as if FEMA, FEMA has an approved equipment list of items that we can bring and they'll pay for. If it's not on the approved list, then they may not reimburse you for it. Don't crash. And, and the other part of this too, you know, to full disclosure here is, don't forget you have an employee element. So, you know, any type of change in working conditions is a meet and confer item with the unions as well. So, and that's a good thing. We'd rather get that down up front. I think some people haven't even contemplated that. For strict, strict guidelines of where you can and can't go, and take it, and part of the COA process covers all that. And it has to be certified people that are trained 
and log that. So we just can't take off and go wherever you want. We have to follow the process and we have to ask the FAA permission for emergency COA if that in fact takes place. Then we have to work within the guidelines restrictions of where we're going. Like Washington State, we're prohibited from flying to Washington State because their internal state laws. We wanted to get UAVs up right of that incident. We were banned from lieu of that. We got Hughes 500 helicopters and Bell Jet Rangers and burned thousands of gallons of fuel to fly over that we could have burned with uh, 20 minutes of electric battery time. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions? Appreciate all your responses and thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Look forward to it's very methodical. Yes, and it needs to be. That's right. Good work. Beautifully done. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. So, agenda item number 22 is to discuss and consider a request from Director Samana regarding a volunteer or volunteer projects at um, fire stations. All right. I was. A, right. Thank you. I was approached by. Uh, one of the pastors in Maple Park Press. They have uh, Compassion Weekend, which is April 2015, and they wanted to do a uh, project involving our fire district uh, to show their support uh, for our firefighters. Uh, so they wanted to include our, our fire district in their project. So I just wanted just to kick the idea around with the board and see if they were interested. In, uh, they kind of left it kind of open. They said that uh, I know they can't do repairs on facilities, but uh, they were willing to uh, maybe uh, cook for them um, during that weekend or uh, provide, uh, as, as they uh, have in the past, residences that maybe the fire district has identified that maybe need some repairs as, as what, the, uh, what 2400 has done. So they're kind of, uh, they just want to show your appreciation to our district. So one of the pastors came up to me and I was just going to put it on the agenda as a discussion. To see if, if we're interested, if we want to participate. Yes. I would just just suggest that the chief contact Mark and Actually, brainstorm a little bit. Actually, the association you're talking about, they do the, the houses and stuff like that and get in touch with them sooner. Could do that. Yeah, rebuilding. Um, yeah, the town building had together. Had yeah. I want to just suggest one other thing. I think the installation of um, smoke detectors and carbon monoxide detectors is a critical, um, and particularly for some of the areas of the county and some of the less affluent areas and so forth. And I would just suggest that as as a, 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 a good idea. A mission. I mean, it could really help the people who live in this district. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, do you, so, Rob, do you want to just have Carol, the chief, come yeah. up with some ideas and then... Well, if the chief could contact sure. Mark, the pastor, and uh, with the different projects, I know that 2400 does, uh, with the reconstruction, we're building together in Habitat for Humanity, maybe this might, might be a project where the church wants to maybe finance the materials that will be used for the uh, particular project. So. I just suggested maybe you could delegate that uh, chief to one of your uh, yeah. Once I talk, to we'll see if we can you know see how we can use this if at all. Maybe it's more appropriate for the association. Right, right. it may be, but right. So thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you for bringing that up, Frank. Did you have know? nothing we did that we bring up earlier in the toy giveaway for Christmas in conjunction with the association? We gave away hundreds of smoke detectors in conjunction with all the toys to the families who showed up at St. Anthony. So every family that came there got one or two smoke detectors as part of the process on it. it, 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 it grow. So we, we were canvassing the lower social economical areas to get in the way at that time. Just doing that on, we forgot to bring it up during the earlier discussion. Thanks. So Can I just ask about those um, 
I was just curious, I don't know what kind they're giving away now, but are these ones that have long, long life batteries? Ten year batteries, the very best of the, of the market available for the newest ones available. Sure. So you've got your directions. Yep, got it. Okay. Thanks, Rob. Thank okay, you. item 23, which is to consider a request from Director Carpenter to send correspondence to the City of Menlo Park on the board's position regarding the M2 FM project in Menlo Park. And um, I know that we have this public comment or speaker card from uh, Peter Santaki. Um, I think it's probably appropriate to first that we have a motion. Yes, it is. So, so moved. Is there a second? Well, the motion is I have circulated the, re the draft motion to the, uh, the members of the board and it's included in the package. And so I would move that the board adopt this motion. To, to take a position and send a letter to the city of Menlo Park? Okay. Now, the motion is as stated in my January 13th email to the board. It's a three paragraph motion. Okay. And I am proposing those three paragraphs uh, as a board action. Right. Okay. I get that, which is basically the title of this item. No. The title of this item allows this motion to be introduced because it's the subject matter that has been publicly noticed. And I have provided, as a courtesy to my colleagues, the language of the motion ahead of time so people would have the opportunity to look at it and think about it. It's been seconded, and now we can go to okay, public comment, and then I have a lot to say about it. Okay. So there's a motion and a second. So Peter Otaki from um, the Mill Park. And I would just add a point of privilege if I could. Sure. I would ask that when we have members of the elected body appear before us, that we waive our time limit. Yes, that's fine. And that they not be restricted to three minutes. Fine. Excuse me, the third member, Thank you for um, allowing me to speak. Thank you for. I'll try not to go beyond three minutes. But I do appreciate that. Take as much time as you like. Yeah. <laughs> First of all, um, so I'm Peter Otaki, Menlo Park City Council member, former director of this board. Um, and because this is a rare occurrence that we don't have a city council meeting tonight on a Tuesday night, I could actually come. So the first thing, I just wanted to say hello, <laughs> greetings. It's nice to see all of you. Um, I normally don't get the chance to come by. Um, I did want to take the opportunity. Uh, I, I put together this afternoon a sort of back of the envelope analysis, looking at the fiscal impact analyses from various projects that have been approved by the City of Menlo Park. Um, for development but have not yet been built that or are under construction that I thought might be helpful um, to you as you're weighing um, whether or not to um, send this letter or, or when you'd like to do that. There are a couple things that I thought would be helpful. Um, so this analysis assumes that uh, uh, and, and tries to estimate the incremental property tax increase that will uh, occur from, uh, from certain of these projects. Uh, for example, the Facebook West Campus, which is an increase in assessed valuation of about $209 million, that is from their fiscal impact analysis. The property uh, tax share that the fire district gets out of property taxes is approximately, can, can range from uh, 12 to 14 percent, uh, depending upon the area within Mellon Park and that school district is covered. But I just assumed a flat 13 percent for, for ease of, of map. Um, the, uh, so in the case of the Facebook West Campus, uh, you've probably seen that under construction now. Um, the rough, and I, and I want to qualify this as sort of back of the all you know, analysis, is that that project it would generate an additional 270000 per year of uh, additional property tax revenue. Similarly, the housing element that was approved um, uh, last year over a couple of year effort, um, which includes, uh, for example, the uh, Anton project over on Haven, 
uh, which would be about 400 units of, of apartments. Uh, the Hamilton uh, apartments uh, across from Facebook, um, as well as 600, I believe 680 units that are in the downtown specific plan are broken out in this number. So, but I believe it, in, it is included in there. So, um, so certainly some of this is under construction. Some of it may not get built, some of it may get built, but the point is that under the housing element fiscal impact analysis, uh, it uh, estimated an increase in assessed valuation of about 392 million. Property taxes, of course, of 1%. The fire district share would be about 510,000 of that. Um, of that. Menlo Gateway, fiscal impact analysis 227. The current general plan in the M2 area, um, I understand from, um, uh, from uh, the various workshops I've attended, allows a million square feet. This is not under the update, this is under the current general plan zoning for the M2. Um, if you assume a $350 cost of construction <coughs> as a minimum estimate for the increase in assessed valuation, uh, that would mean another $450,000 in property tax share. Um, so if you sum those up, that's about $1.4 million um, in annual property tax. In addition to that, the, as part of when the city lost its redevelopment agencies, the, the state took away the RDA back a couple of years ago. It required the city to sell um, the land that uh, on Hamilton Avenue. Um, fortunately, it was sold in a multiple bid, market, but it was sold for nearly $8 million. The fire district as part of that dissolution of the RDA got its property tax share, which is again approximately 13%. So while I don't know the exact number, that's about a 900,000 one-time contribution. The point of this is that I hope that as these are already part of the, you know, the, the property tax formula, and what I hope that um, the board will do in the, is take this into account <coughs> as you're looking at what service level um, increases you'll need to accommodate the, the future growth, and to, to help to take that into account before looking at, for example, uh, an impact fee. Um, I think there's support for an impact fee, but I'd also like to make sure that some of this, um, these property tax increases are factored in, because I do think it does support, for example, a ladder truck or additional um, station um, uh, upgrades or enhancements. Um, and it is a funding stream that is currently in place. Um, so with that, I think it's entirely up to you to, 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 uh, to raise to the city's attention. Oh, by the way, I should mention I am not speaking on behalf of the City of Menlo Park or the City Council. But I certainly would not have read these fiscal impact analyses if I hadn't been on the City Council. So anyway, I hope that some of this math is helpful um, to you as you uh, weigh your um, um, the district's plan going forward. Thanks. So we have a motion and a second. So Peter, you're going to discuss? Yes. Um, <clears throat> first, let me just thank folks for sticking around. Um, right. <laughs> I put this on the agenda because, you know, the, for me, the, the straw which broke the camel's back was a email from the city attorney to one of the city council members in response to my uh, raising concern that they had totally ignored the resolution that this board passed last year, asking them to do the very simple thing of recognizing the fire agency as a government agency in the PF ordinance as every other city in the state of California does. And as I read that, I realized you know, there's, there's this story about, you know, the way that you cook frogs is you put them in cold water and then you gradually increase the heat. Um, and if you try to put a frog in boiling water, he'd jump out. Well, we're the frogs, folks, and the city of Menlo Park has been just gradually 
you know, turning up the heat, turning up the heat. So let me go through the litany. It begins with 170 Middlefield, a property which we purchased for the purpose of establishing our administrative offices and freeing up the space in this building that could be used uh, more appropriately for operational purposes. I won't go into detail on it, but uh, as I was on the board at that time, I became painfully aware of the obstacles the city of Menlo Park put in the way of the district occupying that property, renovating it uh, on a timely basis. You know, trivial things like taking an existing approved handicapped parking space and saying no longer, you know, you can't use that as a handicapped parking space. And it was my first introduction to the fact that the city of Menlo Park was not, in my opinion, a partner. Uh, they viewed the fire district, in my opinion, uh, as an adversary and, 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 and not as a component of public service with the city. The next stage along the road was 444 Pope Camino Real. Uh, many of you will recall that that was an automobile dealership uh, that for a number of years had the strange thing of a fire engine, antique fire engine, sitting in the old showroom floor. Well, the reason that we leased that from Stanford University was that it was our intention to use it as a temporary Station 6 while we replaced Station 6. And the wonderful response from the city of Menlo Park was that if you want to use that as a temporary fire station, you're going to have to make $400,000 worth of improvements to it before we will allow you to use it as a temporary fire station. And obviously that was unreasonable and we did not feel that was an appropriate expenditure. And so having leased it from Stanford for a number of years, uh, we basically got very little use out of it. We asked the city, well, can we use it for other things? They said, oh, it's zoned as an automobile dealership and that's really essentially all you can use it for. <clears throat> the Gateway Project came up. We said to the city, look, that's going to create some significant challenges for us because it's going to be a high-rise structure on the east side of 101. We don't have the apparatus on the east side of 101 to respond. And the city of Menlo Park basically said, go screw yourself. You know, we're not going to negotiate on your, they're, they're the lead agency in the, the state system. They're the lead agency on approving something like this. But one of the responsibilities of the lead agency is to take into consideration the concerns of subordinate agencies. And the city of Menlo Park's response was, forget it, we're not going to do anything for you. And when it came, push come to shove, they said, oh, Mr. Bohannon, we think you ought to spend another $50,000 on flowers. And didn't ask for a single penny for the fire district. Now, Councilmember Otaki, or a citizen Otaki, has talked about property tax revenues. There's a difference between ongoing expenses <coughs> and expenditures that are required to meet a new demand. The whole purpose of the property tax system is to pay the ongoing operating expenses of providing services. And what we have is the city of Menlo Park is granting development rights, which are an unfunded mandate on us because they say to people, you go ahead and develop that stuff, oh, by the way, the fire department's going to take care of you. And if it needs, you know, if the fire department needs new resources, that's their problem. And we will refuse to negotiate on their behalf, even though we're the lead agency. So we now go to Facebook. Again, the fire district said, geez, you know, we've got a problem with the size of this construction and our ability to provide services. And the city literally said to us, well, you know, you're going to have to you know, make your own deal. We can only get so much money out of Facebook, and we're taking all of it. We're not going to give you a penny. Uh, and Chief don't hesitate at any point to say, wait a minute, you know, that's not true. Um, <clears throat> the specific plan comes along. Significant growth and development in the downtown area. And we said to the city, one of the things that we think is essential to that is expanding Station 6. And we 
had lots of discussions, and they just kept blowing us off. And finally, you know, we even had our lawyers write them a letter and say, we need to have these two parcels put in the specific plan area and zoned for fire station. And the city of Mellow Park's response was, yeah, no, no, we're not going to deal with that. It's your problem. <clears throat> Last year, we sent two resolutions to the city of Menlo Park. The one asked that their PF ordinance be revised to read, as does Palo Alto's, as does Redwood Cities, as does County of San Mateo, that a government agency includes the fire district. We never got a response. And when I raised the question with the council members, one of the council members went to the city attorney, and the city attorney's response is, we did it because we could. We just told them to screw it, because we have the power to do that. <clears throat> the other thing we asked for was the Station 6 merger, and that was, in fact, approved. But recognize, this is an eight-year process. The building next door to Station 6 wasn't even conceived when we began the discussions with the city of Menlo Park. And it will be finished before we even start working on Station 6. The same thing is true of Station 2. We worked with the city of East Palo Alto. We acquired two adjacent properties, much like we did in Menlo Park. They merged the properties. We put up a 100-foot antenna. We're building an absolutely superb station. And that station two will be finished before we even turn the first pile of dirt on station six. The updated fire code, we, you know, we talked about it tonight. Atherton, East Palo Alto, County of San Mateo, hey, great. We think that you know, this is the way it's been written for the state. We accept it. The city of Mellow Park says, no, we're not going to give you control. Again, it's the Bill McClure answer. We can, therefore we will. What's right is not the issue. The fact is that we have the power to do these things, and because we have the power to do these things, we are going to do them. <coughs> M2. We're talking about massive upzoning in that area. And there's no way that Station 77 can in fact support that massive growth. And we've, even, we've said to the city, you know, we want to expand Station 77. And they turned around and sold the property behind it to somebody else. And then they say, well, we really don't want to extend the lease. You know, <clears throat> my very strong urging is that when the time comes, we exercise the right of eminent domain. We pick a parcel based on our <clears throat> service study that's in the right location and we build a station which is identical to Station 2 to serve East, East Menlo Park. But the attitude of the city is, oh my gosh, you know. <clears throat> and if you read through the litany that they put together for the M2 guidelines, they never once mention fire response. Never once. Peter, correct me if I'm wrong. And what do they say? Emergency response access under the transportation guideline. Yes. Make sure it's for that under quality of life including including safety, public safety as yeah, well. But never mentioned the word fire doesn't appear. Uh, emergency response was written specifically for the fire district and fire fire response, but also for police response. I understand that, but I think the city has very carefully chosen not to use the word fire. You, know, you just do a word search for the document. You will not find the word fire district, fire services in there. And <clears throat> again, they're the lead agency, and they're about to put a huge burden on essentially Station 77. So what's that mean? It means that the service that we now provide to Bellhaven is going to now have to be shared with a substantially larger population and the demands of, of that larger population means that our level of service for Bellhaven is going to be reduced. <clears throat> and I think it's time the frogs got out of the pan and basically said, folks, we're not putting up with this anymore. 
Your attitude, Menlo Park, is you do it because you can, and I think we have been nice guys and nice gals too long. We, and the fascinating thing is I wrote this a week ago, and I've described a whole bunch of things where the city of Menlo Park basically never even responded. And lo and behold, today, we get a letter from the city manager expressing concerns about my proposal. That's the fastest response we've ever gotten from the city of Menlo Park to anything. And I think the message is the only way that we're going to get anything out of the city of Menlo Park is to threaten being non-supportive of the things they want to do. It's absolutely inexcusable, in my opinion, that they would contemplate this huge upzoning of M2 and not require the developers who are going to get these tremendous economic benefits to contribute to the needs of the fire district to supply the services that they need. And that's totally separate and distinct from operating expenses which come from property taxes. And the city of Menlo Park as lead agency has never hesitated to say to a developer, well, you know, if you want to do that, you need to give us some money up front to do X, Y, and Z. But they have never asked for a penny for the fire district. It's always what they can put in their pocket. And when we question them on it, they say, we can only get so much money out of these people, and we're taking all of it. So I think the time has come to put a halt to that and make, them, make it clear to them that we're not prepared to go along with it. Questions? Um, so Rex and Chuck, you were you all were the liaisons to Willow Park. I'd like to hear more in detail because I don't think that we've had detailed updates um, in terms of the similar to what Peter has given us. What has happened in those discussions? I don't have a long past history with Menlo Park as being a liaison, but the history that I've had in the last year has been pretty good. I'm not saying that we got everything we wanted, but I know when the 18th we met with the uh, mayor and uh, Councilman Otaki and the city manager. We had three things on the agenda, which I reported out tonight. One of them was, was the fire code. And one of them was Station 6, and the other thing that we wanted to talk about was the general plan we had too. Two of those things have been taken care of. I don't know, maybe if our timing was good, we just got lucky, whatever. But they worked out. What I found both of them to be was you could sit down and talk to them and have a good dialogue and just kind of put your cards down on the table, much like you have done. I think that that's probably a good place to do it, because I think it probably puts them in a little bit better place too. I think that there's some of those things we are going to have another meeting with them on the 27th. And we just made out a small agenda and put three or four items on it that we can sit down and talk about. And yeah, some of the items you're talking about are on there, which is the M2, impact fees, uh, those kind of things. I think we need to get started, but I'm not in favor of necessarily, I'd much rather sit down and talk to them first. I would always like to start off nice. You can always get nasty, but you can't unring the bell once you've done it. So we've done 10 years of nice, and you want to do it a lot? Yeah. I think you're dealing with different people here now than you had in the past. That's the, you know, that I think is the most beautiful excuse in the world. You get a new city council and a new mayor, and they basically wash their hands and say, well, we're not responsible for anybody. I met with the mayor last year after I was very critical of the city. And he said, Peter, I promise you that these fire board issues will be on every agenda for the rest of the year. That was a promise that was not kept. They never answered us on the PF ordinance. And on the code, they said, yeah, you know, We'll agree to it as long as we change it to suit our purposes. What did you get out of that? I mean, what was I'll the tell you win? What I got out of it. What was the win? Before I had 1984, I had nothing. At least now I've got 95% of what fire prevention needs 
to do the job at Menlo Park. If I had to give up that 5%, I didn't want to. I'd rather have the same code all the way around. But if that's what it takes to get 95% of it, I'm willing to do that. It's either, at least I got something instead of nothing. This is a very difficult issue because, um, and I, I want to welcome Peter to the wars against development, which I've been waging for 25 years or something, um, and which, as as recently as six months ago, Peter, you were on the other side of. But I, I have long opposed development. Not I've been a developer in my business. I've developed properties, but the fact is that economists call it externalities. The developers don't pay for externalities, and they don't want to pay for them, and they're not going to pay for them. The end. It's up to the cities to swallow it. Now, let, let me or back. force them to pay it. Yeah, but they're not going to because it, it doesn't pencil out. They, they can only do it if they can kind of make if, if they can just put it in without and then run because they can't afford to do it. But I, I want to. The Gateway Project was a perfect one, and I think in fairness, Peter and I got our training in the same institution. We're finance, finance wonks in the same in the same way, um, but. And just to be fair, Peter, I'm going to, you talk about the property tax share from Gateway here. That's true, but if you look at the fiscal analysis that was done, and I studied it thoroughly, there are expenses associated with this property tax revenue. You haven't included the expenses. So, in fact, if you looked at that com the companion report that was done, which dealt with special districts, special districts lost money because of the Mulhannon project. So they were worse off as a result of it. There was some revenue, there's no question about it, but there were more expenses. And the good news here is that I think the city council, for the first time ever in my memory, and I've been a resident since 1975, <coughs> for the first time they have people on the council who can understand these issues. Peter, Catherine, um, uh, there's just people now who can understand that. But so there was no money left over from Gateway. We basically said, I mean, the chief said, I say we now, I wasn't part of it then. I was there arguing for other problems, problems with schools, problems with other special districts. And the city itself, it's screwing itself. It can't afford the stuff. So all the things that Peter's saying is right, but the residents are getting screwed for exactly the same reason. It's, it costs more to serve these developments than we're getting in property tax increments. So the chief was arguing for uh, Bohannon to pay part of a, a, a truck at the time that maybe cost a million and a half dollars to be able to reach 10 stories. And Bohannon basically blew it off. Now, it's, you're right, they spent $500,000 to uh, landscape. To landscape. But you know what, it's worse than that. I ran for council that year with Peter. I opposed the Gateway Project. Mr. Bohannon, according to state reports, spent $150,000 on three mailers to oppose me, and he did it successfully. And so, look, I mean, if anybody is a veteran, a wounded veteran in these wars, it's me. However, I, I think that the problem that has come up in terms of impact is an important problem, and I, I, would, I think it's for the first time the city council can actually address those issues. I'd actually, for perhaps a little different reason than Rex, I'd like to give the city a chance to agendize impacts on itself and special districts of its development. Because the M2 is a perfect example of something that's going to screw everybody. You get more property tax because you're serving more people. There are more people that have heart attacks, or more people that, that think that, that have car accidents. But it's worse than that. We've got to have little helicopters that can go above the traffic to even get to these emergencies. How are we going to afford that? And I'm joking, we don't have helicopters. But how are we going to get to these things? How are we going to do that? Um, we don't have the means to do yeah, it. We saw that in the fire in East Palo Alto two I, I weeks ago. We're, so, life we is, had to respond through Palo Alto down University Avenue because we couldn't come down Willow and couldn't come down Mark. So we do all this development. And, and then we say to Menlo Park, okay, you know, we give up our right, our veto rights on changes to primary response grounds. 
huge, huge mistake, which is why I voted but, against it. Let, let me come back. To, this is where it really gets difficult. I live along, right off Woodland Avenue near the creek in Menlo Park. We, we installed speed bumps. Why? Because of the development, everyone was cutting through our neighborhood. So would I rather slow up the fire truck slightly in those few instances compared to having all these other people racing through the neighborhood? And this is a trade-off that I think residents can reasonably talk about, and they don't want to lose control over. I don't want to lose control over speed bumps, but I understand the problem with speed bumps. And so I'm, I see it in, in both ways. And I can see why the city of Menlo Park would want to retain control of that. Because, I, again, it slows the fire trucks, but it slows all these yachts that are coming through the neighborhood also, and that's important to me. So I, I, would, I would like to see us try to get this agendized. I, I, I hope that we could perhaps postpone your motion or something. But more than that, I'm a little concerned let about your motion. You Wait, let me finish. An offer you can't refuse. I'm a little concerned that you're proposing things here that at least sound like they're, they're not legal. In other words, for us to not respond to a fire. No, that's not what it says. Not what it says. But it says we can't guarantee a response. It's not what it says. I chose my language very carefully. Okay. Um, I would like to get, you know, Chief, do you have anything to... No, I was, gonna, I was looking at Harold. Well, actually, Harold. you haven't gone through the board yet. You haven't gone through the board yet. Because at, at, at a certain point, the offer that you can't refuse, I'm prepared to make a motion to table, but I don't want to do that until we've had the opportunity to get all the views on the table. And those people who represent us in the discussions with the city of Menlo Park <coughs> go into those discussions armed with the fact that the board is sitting here with this motion on the table and is prepared to come back and discuss further unless the city is shows more cooperation and partnership. So, oh, go ahead, Rob. Yeah, uh, I think by this letter, Peter, kind of says it all. Uh, I can definitely say the, the three years I've been on the board, uh, our relationship with the council has been outstanding, I have to say that. Uh, they're more receptive. Uh, there's been other councils and mayors that I haven't, uh, as, a, as a citizen, not as a board person, but as a citizen, had a little bit of communication issues with them. But I have to say that the, the current council is very receptive, and because of your motion, the city manager is pretty receptive. Now, their council is another thing. Uh, Mr. McClure is his own person sometimes. But I, I have to say that the three years I've been on, I've had a good relationship. But, you know, uh, we need to say enough's enough also. I mean, we have to draw the line in the sand. I know our relationship with the current council is really good, but it shows progress, Peter, when the city manager writes this letter. Well, at least we got their attention. Well, absolutely. So um, I think we're at a good point here where we can go in either direction. As you said, maybe you consider tabling the motion. It's your motion. Um, but I'm willing to hear other thoughts, especially from the chief. I like to hear what the chief has to say. So let me let me make oh, a comment for, because for Rob and I have been on the board for about for the same period right. of time, right? And I agree with Rob that the relationship has gotten better, but I appreciate the fact, Peter, that you have had a much longer term look, and I don't think that should be lost on this board. But at the same time, um, I think that. Now, I definitely don't disagree with you that this is an issue and it's a problem. And it's something that we have to address. But we do have a meeting scheduled with um, the mayor and the city manager with, and, Peter, and Peter Otaki and um, the chief rep and I. So let's see you know, where we go, what we get from there, and maybe just table this and have to bring it back next month depending on how the meeting goes next I'd week. I'd be prepared to do that. I would like to hear from the chief before yes. I make a motion to table. 
if Rex still wanted to talk. Oh, right. Oh. No, that's basically, I, I mean, I was just going to mention to Peter is that I, Peter Carpenter is that I agree with most of the things you put in here. <laughs> I think that this, by itself, just the fact that he acknowledged it, gives you a chance to go, okay, the ball's in your court. You acknowledge it. What do you, I mean, you're going to talk well, to us or what? Yeah, for example, I, I, I love that on the city letterhead, you know, they're supporting impact fees. Yeah. Um, you know, that's a very positive thing. I would make a comment that that would not have occurred had these motions not been prepared ahead of time and circulated widely. You know, that was the precipitating function. And I probably would agree with you. Chief? Carol, please. So again, I also can't disagree with uh, some of the things that you said. I mean, the history going back has been frustrating at times, obviously, as the person that tried to deal with a lot of these projects and wasn't successful, and, and I got the bruises to show for it sometimes as well. And I think it hurt us with relationships uh, with different members of the community. David Bohan is one of them. I mean, I'm not saying we had the perfect ideas, but you know, in the absence of having things like impact fees and so forth, you know, like we did with Facebook, we were kind of forced to negotiate our own deals. But that was then and this is now. I'm not going to say that history doesn't repeat itself. But, you know, with the council members, and it's obviously, it's, I think it's a big thing that you have an off-duty council member here today who's <laughs> a civilian or a citizen, but that he's here and that he was on this board and understands the issues, I think has been helpful. And I certainly saw a, a, a change when he went over to the city of Mellow Park, where at the time, I was trying to get, you know, 20 different issues resolved and ended up having a meeting with all 20 on the agenda and the day that he became the mayor, I think, is, is that when that happened. So, you know, progress is possible. Uh, the new city manager, he's not new anymore, Alex and I meet regularly. And we have a very good relationship. We don't always agree. But I can tell you that overall, some of the things that he's helped with have gone through. I mean, we've gotten a lift. Most recently was Station 6. Granted, it was in the abyss of Measure M. Nobody knew which way that was going to go. And to Peter's point, it should have been handled years ago, but it wasn't on the watch of some of the people that are on there. And on their watch, it did go through. And that was really nice to finally see that happen uh, because there was a lot of other factors in that. I believe if the mayor says that this item for the fire prevention uh, ordinance is going to be on consent on the 27th, that will happen. Whether someone pulls it off, I don't know. And you're right, Peter, there were concessions that were made, and I think it's been uh, not necessarily the council's issue, but there have been issues at staff where there's not always agreement. Now, there's been a lot of turnover in staff, and as we've noted, some of the turnover has actually left us in a better position with them over there than we were in, in position before. By actually having some of the people leave, we don't actually have some of the issues that we used to have over there. So that's a positive. We forgot the emergency services agreement. You know, they entered into that last year. We're looking at renewing sometime in February with them. And I know that they're very supportive and talking to the city manager. You know, he appreciates the work that we do for them. So, you know, the partnership, it hasn't been an easy partnership at times. It hasn't always been an easy marriage, if you want to call it that way either. But I have to say, I think it is improving. And I think, you know, if I was to have a suggestion, it would be to table this, not to take it off the agenda completely, but to give them the chance to prove that things are changing, give a new mayor the opportunity to do that, to continue to work with the city manager, who, again, I think has been very, very forthright. John's in fire prevention as the fire marshal over there. I think he's had really good luck with the city of Menlo Park. If Ryan Zolikoffer was here, he'd say the same thing. He works in the city manager's office and has, they have nothing but good things to say about him. And he has nothing but good things to say about his experience over there. So, you know, things are changing. Has it been rough? Has it been difficult? Yeah, all those things. But it seems as if we're moving forward. And I hope that we truly do have a breakthrough in the relationship like we've had in East Palo Alto and Atherton. But sometimes those things slip back based upon changes in staff, changes in council, changes in priority. And, uh, you know, my suggestion would be, you know, keep it, but don't do it now. Continue to let us get, you know, some movement, which I think right now we've seen a lot of movement in recent, recent weeks and months. So.
Uh, I just have something to say to the Chief, and I don't mean this as a criticism, Chief, it's just I, I think, I, I don't think as a district we're very prepared to deal with the impact fees. We know, we're good about the concept, but we don't have a draft of what they should be. If somebody were to say to us, okay, tell us what they are, and we'll start imposing them tomorrow, we'd say, oh, we don't know. Right. And I would say that, and we started talking about this in 2010, so it's been five, four and a half years. We need to, we need to proceed on that. I don't know how we do that, where we do it, but, but I think that should be a priority of yours to get that done probably, if possible, in the next two months or so, some, so we can actually well, it, talk it, about it. It is a priority, and it was a priority last year when I was hurt. We had entered into a contract with Seifel, and they did do a draft report. And unfortunately, you know, upon my return, I didn't agree. I don't agree, and I don't think you would agree either with all the conclusions in it. That I think you mentioned yourself when you read it that the, the calculations were well done. But in terms of, you know, charging everyone for uh, a new fire agency because it looked as if we weren't collecting property taxes and had to buy everything again, that premise was incorrect. You know, where there's impacts, we need to know what the impacts are, and that's where it's reasonable to ask for some costs. And I think the city of Menlo Park noted that, the city of East Palo Alto noted that. So, you know, if we're adding more employees, if we're adding square footage, if we're going up, if we're replacing, you know, residential with multi-residential units, then, then I think there's impacts, and I think those individuals need to be on the hook to pay for that. But based upon a formula, it's fair. You know, we were successful with other entities like Facebook. We learned with, with the Gateway Project, and I think that helped us down the road. But yeah, the only way to equitably do this, to your point, is these impact fees. CityGate has started with the standards of cover. That will segue right into updating the impact fee report, the Nexus study, and that all should be done within, CityGate will be done within four months is what they've committed to, and we need to start to your point. We realize that within the next couple of months, we need to go back once CityGate's got the base work done and meet with Cycle again and get that study completed. But then we as a district, you as a board can adopt that, but we need to make the case with the jurisdictions that we serve. I'd like to ask you, you would to, to put the uh, flawed study, not to approve it, but put the flawed study on the finance committee agenda. Peter will have an opportunity to re review it, I'd review it, and we might be able to be helpful in terms of at least refining Next the steps. concept. Next we'll sure. from here. And, and we did have that on agenda last year. Yeah. I'm trying to remember what month we put it on there, but basically just to bring it back so you can see it again, because several of you had not seen it, but also to say that it'll, this is flawed, we need to redo yeah. this. And one of the concerns, and you and I have had this discussion, is that in order to go forward with <coughs> impact fees, we basically needed the concurrence of East Palo Alto, Atherton, and Menlo Park. Um, Atherton basically says, hey, no problem, because they don't have any commercial activities and there's not going to be any rezoning. Uh, I think the general sense from East Palo Alto is their support. And now, guess what? Thanks to the discussion we've been having for the last few days, the city of Menlo Park has gone on record saying we support impact fees. And I think that's a breakthrough. And I'm really glad to see that in writing. Thank you, Peter. Um, I would like to take this opportunity to, to make a motion to table this with the comment that I would like you in your liaison meeting to ask the council to put on its agenda our request regarding the PF workers. That's been, that was sabotaged at the staff level, was never presented to the council. The council never had the opportunity to say yes or no. To the best of my knowledge, the city of Menlo Park is the only government agency in the state of California that has a PF ordinance that does not recognize other government agencies as a public facility. And I think it is symbolic. And why, why is it symbolic? Because the PF ordinance permitted uses are limited to an FAR of 0.3. And so typically what we would have to do, because we have a bigger FAR but no parking, et cetera, et cetera, we would have to come in with an exception anyway. The city would still have a great deal of control over what we did. But it's the concept of saying to a partner agency, you know, we recognize that you guys exist. We recognize that you're also a public agency. 
like the state of California, like the county of San Mateo. And, and McClure's answer was, we're not going to give you that recognition because we don't have to. And I think that's an insult. So I would just, I, I move, move the table. I make a personal request to you, meeting with the city, to ask the city council to at least take our resolution and discuss it. And if they as a council want to say no, that's their decision. I would hope they wouldn't. Second motion. Any discussion on enabling the motion? Yeah, I think we've discussed yeah. everything. Yeah. Well, you can't debate the motion. The motion yeah, that's, that's the table is not debatable. Oh, that's right. That's so, right. one so, comment on the PF? Yeah. So, it, it just so Director Carpenter knows, I don't know if you've seen the tapes, but when we pushed through with Station 6, that did come up. And as I told Director Carpenter, you know, that was not the time we were going to pursue it. But we did leave it open with the Council and the Planning Commission because it is an issue, and we said, you know, this isn't, this, we don't feel this is done, it's going to come up again, we build another station. Separate from Station 6, we would, you know, we want to have this discussion, we want to deal with this issue, and I don't think there was anybody that disagreed, it just wasn't within the timing of Station 6. Well, I think we were owed an answer from a resolution of May of last year. Can you add something? We'll inflame Peter a tiny bit, but I just want to add a hey, go ahead. <laughs> I had a good week in the current inflame. in the current listing of city Menlo Park projects. There's a uh, residential project going through in two addresses: 650 Oak Grove and 660 Oak Grove. One of them is in the downtown area, and one of them is outside, and it is proceeding full speed ahead. So I just wanted to show them. Add that. I mean, oh, yeah. they're, they're proceeding together, hand in hand, regardless of having separate zones. Now, my impression is that every single time the city of Menlo Park has had the opportunity to deal with a fire district project and a commercial project, the commercial project for priority. And the living proof of that is the building on Oak Road next to our fire station, which was a gleam in the eye of the owner when we started the Station 6 discussions. And we'll be finished before we even put a shovel in the ground. But, as I said, a motion to table is not the big. <laughs> so, so, Peter, just so you know, I think Rex just jotted down and he'll probably add that to the agenda that Great. we'll be passing out to you. Um, so, Mayor and Council Member. I have a motion. Yes, vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Unanimous. Thank you. Okay, <coughs> Peter. Okay, so we are now um, at item number 24, which is basically our board um, you. setting board priorities and goals for the calendar year 2015. So, um, in your packet, you should have received. <coughs> Document from Les White, which is done um, April of 2014, and um, the 21 items. And so the way I did this, I'm trying to simplify this as much as I can. I mean, I wanted to, I, I think it's important to do this just because it's come up that um, as we move forward with you know, setting goals for the chief and so that we can benchmark his performance. I just I just think that we as a board need to be able to, to put together what we want the chief to do so that when we review him, he knows what we want to accomplish. But also, um, just for the goals for the district too, the natural view, almost like a vision setting kind of exercise. But it's more than an exercise because next month, Based on what we decide today, um, I'm going to ask the chief to bring in his list of priorities, if you want to know if they're priorities, but the list that you created with your strategic planning committee and, and see how that is integrated with what we decide tonight. So I have taken the liberty of just putting all of these board goals from the last white document and kind of bunching everything together as best as I could, separating things, into, like, uh, grouping redundant items. And this is what I came up with, 21 um, items here. 
So what I want to do and is to, for us to have a brief discussion on these items. And what I and I've actually labeled the, the sponsors name, and that means that you know, for example, Rob was interested in implementing the strategic plan, or, you know, and, and Rex too. What does that mean to you, right? Or um, for example, Rob also, I, and I'm picking on you all the people names the fourth one on here. So I mean, just just, just more. Can we have a copy of what you were? These are just my notes. But if you want this, I can. But oh. It's, it's right here. It's right here. Oh, I'm sorry. No, that's okay. Yeah, sorry. So, um, so I do, but because there are so many, I do want to set a time limit. So, um, I would like the sponsors to, you know, take one minute to, to state why they put this on here, and then each board minute, each board member have a one minute max comment. So that's going to be phase one. And then phase two is, uh, we're actually going to vote on what these are, and what our priorities are. So I want to thank Chuck for helping me with this part of it. And we got so excited we were actually doing something, like that, setting goals, that he um, was kind enough to put little stickies together so that when we actually put our priorities up on the board, we can prioritize. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully this won't be. But I think it's an important question. So basically for phase two, we're going to be voting. And um, the ground rules are pretty straightforward, I think, that you can vote for um, what your high priority is, that's a purple. And what your, uh, or very high priority, your high priority, which is yellow, and your medium priority, which is um, blue. And so they each have been given a number for points. And you can only vote for, like you can't put all of your votes on one item. So you have to just, you have to spread out your vote essentially, if that makes any sense. So this is essentially the ground rules. Are there any questions so far about this? And so we got we have two stickers with each number on it, right? Sorry, no. what was that? No, we only have one sticker. No, you have two. I got two. Two. So we got two two votes for number one, two yes, votes for number three, two votes for number five. Okay. Yes. Right. Yes. So, but what we're going to do is go through these twenty-one right here really quickly, um, and. Bob, because I know that you were the sponsor for... I noticed the great enthusiasm in the audience. You see that, huh? Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm going to pre-apologize. I have to leave at 10. I'm sorry, oh, directors. I, you know, this is actually, I want to stay for this part. I'm sorry. I thought we would be done You're by done 10. <laughs> I'll watch exactly. it on YouTube. But <laughs> yeah, exactly. So we got a board that we're going to put these things on? Or well, we, we put, have You can put the numbers on the uh, whiteboard. Yeah, actually, we have like. these. So, um... Oh, yeah, those ones. Yeah, that we can tape on. I thought we had some tape. Yeah, you yeah. asked me to bring this. Or, yeah, so I'm just going to write the results on this. But, um. Oh, you don't have to touch tape or anything? There should be tape I somewhere. Not to bring One sec, let me check. Yeah, so our results will be on there. So, we yeah. can put these, we can tape yeah. on there. We'll so, put it's put time to put these on. on. I'll put them on the whiteboard for you. Okay, thanks. Good yeah, that masking tape should work fine. But that's going to work too well. Blue tape. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> you want the other one over here? Oh, you're going to just put them all there, Chuck? Which one? Yeah. It's probably I mean, not around the room, but. Yeah. yeah. Okay. While you're talking, I'll be okay. doing this, but I'm listening. Okay. So, just if you want to just take a few seconds to review um, sure, really. you know, what you want to put sponsor. No, it's okay. Good job. And the other thing is, I just want to make note that if you want to take something off of this list because you're like, oh, well, this is being done and we don't, it's in process, we can remove things and short Well, that'll happen by default. I know. Because what we vote for goes forward, what we don't vote for is disappears. Right. You don't have to see it. I know, but I mean, like, policies and procedures. Good night, John.
Take, 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 take her you. with you. She's okay. supposed to leave at 10. No, we've got five minutes. I, seriously, this is, for me, this is minute. very Virginia. helpful. Virginia. That clock is one. slow. This is our I'll go up that Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you so much, Stephen. You have to stay. Yeah. 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 This is the clock that rules my life. So, this is the clock I follow. Thank you, Stephen. <laughs> Thank you, Stephen. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Because I'm coming straight. Okay, I'm just going to say strategic plan. 
We had one that was done when the chief was injured. We had one done before the chief was injured, and then we had one done in 2014. So my question is, which strategic plan? Well, the one that Susan George this is, this and is, us put together, what was it, December 2000? So that was the uh, update. She did it. That update. was the update. Yeah, this, the base one is still there. Right. But every year it gets updated with, you know, new information. It's a breathing exactly. document. It's a living, breathing okay. document. I think we've explained that enough. Okay. Exactly. Right. Okay. So, okay. But I just want to make sure that we're all on the same page as to what the strategic plan is. What year and all of that. That there has been this, and there's been confusion about that. So. Yeah, no, I think with version at times. Yeah. Okay, yeah. that's fine. So that's okay. Implement strategic plan. Um, anything else? I mean, Rob, you mentioned policies and procedures. Right. That's part of the strategic plan. Right. Okay. The, the chief is in the process now of of taking all that work that that uh, that your senior staff has done and labor. Correct in order to come up with a finalized version. So, right, so, so we're basically there on that. Right, okay. So. Okay, right, that's, that's what I'm saying. It's also a process of elimination here. So like finalized long-term labor agreements, we've got. Well, wait, we missed number three. I don't understand what number three means. Rob? Well, the policies and procedures manual with the MOU manual. See, the, there was an MOU that was set up that had a lot of items in it that involved labor that should not have involved policies and procedures. Mm -hmm. And by the chief setting up his committee with labor, they're, they're in the process of finalizing that where they're separating whatever the labor aspect is as actually up to the administrative and operational procedures that's going to run his agency. Does that clarify? Abish? Okay. Yeah, I would just make the point that I think one of the things that we as a board should focus in on are what are the things that are the responsibility of the board and what are the things the responsibility of the chief. Absolutely. And and my preference is that we ought to we ought to concentrate on the things that are our responsibility. And that's not to say we shouldn't provide guidance to the chief. But I would urge us to put priority on those things over which we have control and responsibility. Right, okay. I, I would agree with that. Um, so getting down to number four, finalize long-term labor agreements. We've already gone through that. And that, again, is something that we have to, as a board, I think we need to work with kind of the chief on. Kind right. Of ongoing. Right. And then um, study service levels and congestions. I know that was what Peter had wanted. That's in the works too, right? The standard of coverage. I, I think, are, are we doing an update here or just explaining what these are? In terms of what? Well, I'm just not sure. We, we got, there's 21 things here. It's 10 o'clock. Um, yeah. you know, why don't we just take our little stickums and put them up on the board and vote? I mean, I, going through them one at a time, I don't think there's any value to that. Well, maybe if we could just at least have a chance to ask a question about it. Like, I didn't know, like Rob says, oh, we ought to do this, but, but I didn't even know what he was talking about. I, I, mean, I just, just say any questions, any questions. At least we could go through each one and make sure we're clear on what it means. It only take like five minutes. Uh-huh. And that's two hours for 21 no, hours. five minutes total. We, we already spent 10 minutes on it. Well, because we haven't got to spend 10 minutes on it. We're, we're getting up to see, I don't know. We spent 10 minutes on it. If it's already in process, does that mean it's not a priority or does it mean it is a priority? I, I don't understand. But what? Are you talking about the long term labor relation? Yeah. Um, labor agreements? Well, of course we want those as a board. You see, that's. I want one. I, I can only speak for myself. So and and that's a place where I think we, in fact, have a key role. That's one of the most important things we do is move towards long-term agreements. We have the ultimate authority to approve or not approve a labor agreement. Uh, I think we've made it very clear to the chief and the management team that long-term labor agreements are important to us. Uh, and I would argue from a board's perspective that that would, should be one of our highest priorities. So I'm looking at 
maintain fiscal health, which I actually think is a very high priority. And four of us to actually put that in there as a priority. Um, but I know that I had, I mean, obviously reduced unfunded <coughs> liabilities, but also just the internal audits, the internal controls in light of the whole situation with the, our last administrative services director, you know, having to deal with that yeah. issue, right? But Virginia, that's also, and when Rex and I, when we did this, this strategic plan, the last one was, you know, that the, the actual physical health of the agency is part of the strategic plan to stay in the black, to to be economical. To, right, I get to, that. Yeah, so I mean. But what I'm trying to do is get our goals set for this calendar year so that we can work with the chief to get his goals set so that when we, when we review him, there's actually something benchmarkable. Because I have done the review process ever since I've been on this board, and I haven't really, I did not think that there was a lot to benchmark because nothing had really been outlined. So that's the only reason I want something for us so that when we, you and I, because you and I are going to have to sit through this review process in the mid-year, Rob. That's, that's, and I just want something for us mm -hmm. to say, okay, did you achieve this? Did you achieve that? That's what this exercise is for. And what I hope to get out of this is let's get our macro goals for the district and work and get Harold the chief's goals to see how his goals will fit into what our, what our macro goals. So maintain fiscal health, right? Maybe Harold's group had something written down during from your strategic planning session. No, Maybe. they didn't really, that wasn't one they dealt with because most of our stuff is operational. Operation. Okay, yeah. so right. then that means to me the maintain fiscal health is a big umbrella issue. So that could, under there, could, you could fit in reduce unfunded liabilities. Um, I know that for me, you know, again, you know, internal controls, you know, auditing controls or whatever. So that, you know, that's something that we as a board want to continue to have as a priority, maintain fiscal health. That's something that we can put up there. Is that we can vote on that, right? So, so number seven does reduce unfunded liabilities. Peter, does that go under maintain fiscal health? Number six. We. Sure. I, I think <laughs> maintaining fiscal health is is almost a motherhood statement. Um, you know, I don't yeah. think that we can do, you know, what we have to do is we have to deal with the component pieces of it. Yes. You know, so I would put a very low priority on, on this language. I think it's something that we should be concerned about, but I think that we are, we, we, the way we accomplish it, is by focusing in on particular issues like unfunded liabilities. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything else? Based on this, I mean, we got. Well, like number nine, the uh, implement management succession plan, and the chief's done that. The yep. chief is. Okay, so right. take that the chief off. is going. Keeps going forward with that. Well, I think it's a continuation of part of his evaluation. Would be that that he is instilling career development within his organization, and he has a succession plan for that. Uh, in, f in fact, I, isn't it one of the factors that we have to do every year to do some type of succession plan or something? Uh, we try and update. I mean, just we just updated Jenny's goals again for the calendar year, but it's on a fiscal too. And I know you missed the the closed session. I updated the board off to tell you some of the stuff that's going on. That's fine. Okay. Yeah. We have enough here. To, yeah. You know, need to We're on the recorder still. So. Yeah. Okay. So, so we we'll also have to increase the transparency and competition. That's something that the board can do. So I guess if y'all wanted to, I think Peter's right in terms of dividing it between board stuff and um, um, what the chief needs to do. There's no question. So I guess maybe a different way of starting from this, starting with this is, what do you think the board should do based on this compilation? Can we just keep going down these things? So that I think we've got the idea as we talk about okay. it. Okay. So um, increase transparency of compensation, benefits, pensions. Increase. Peter, any comment on that? Uh, which number are we Ten. Ten. Is, that ten. is that how we display stuff? Or is, is that what you mean by transparency? Well, again, you know, I think that's a philosophical point, 
and I wouldn't put, you know, I wouldn't say, you know, just in everything we do, we should be concerned with transparency, but I don't think that it's an objective in itself. Okay. 11, increase workforce diversity. Peter? Again, you know, I, well, that one I think is primarily falls in the chief's lap. Okay. You know, he does hiring and firing. Yep. Uh, the only diversity issue that we deal with two diversity issues. Um, we deal with the chief and we deal with Michelle. And we've got gender balance between the two. <laughs> okay, improve. We've hired the handicap. I mean, come on. I mean, improve, improve management. You've got to cover a lot of boxes these days. <laughs> right. Improve management team reps. What, is, what does that mean? Something means working better with your staff. We know that. I, mean, I think some of that's already taken place. We had the discussion already on closed session. We want to follow through on that. I think a great help will be when your DC gets here. So, so this is this is a chief thing rather than a board. Yes, right. It's an operation. Yep. It's a chief's board. Okay, improved disaster planning, Chuck and Rex. I think that that, that actually well, that works on two levels. Number one, he has to decide it's up it's in the chief's ballpark. To assign somebody to that task of taking care of certain disaster planning and make sure that they follow through with it. The other hand is, is that they are the ones that should be working with the disaster, the emergency preparedness committee, and taking any input that they have back and putting it into implementation. So is that a chief thing? Well, it's both. It's both the chief and, and, and the board thing. Yeah. I, I agree that's a board thing. I think it, this idea, I, I don't think we have very good disaster planning yet. We don't have plans. Nobody really knows what the plans are. And we don't really have a single person that's in charge of that or responsible for that. I think it's a problem. Okay. We're going to plan for that. Okay. Complete station two. So that's um, underway. Yeah, that's yeah. Complete planning for station six. That's, that's pretty much gone. Okay. Ensure district is in compliance with employment laws. Um, you got an HR person. She yeah, she'll, I think that she'll that. take care of that. Chuck, become one of the top ten global agencies in the U.S. Local agencies. Local. I'm sorry, not global. Local. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I just this was. I think we are. This was. A, a, think we are. a lot of different areas you are. Yeah. A strategic I mean, plan that, that one of our goals is to be excellent. I think we're there. Okay. Chief. Well, I mean, we can always. Yeah, always room for improvement, right? <laughs> okay, Chuck, implement implement defined benefit pension plan. Yes, I would modify that slightly. I would like to do that, but I also think it's important that we uh, modify the existing um, Calpers plan. Mm -hmm. So uh, I would add that as part of it. How would you do that? <coughs> We would vote. It's done. Because uh, it's not quite. No, it has to go to the actual uh, group. Yeah. And they have to vote first, we, first we would have, as a board, have to agree that we would do that. Then it gets negotiated. I don't think, I don't know if There's know. a lower level of firefighters that we're, we haven't implemented. It was from Governor Brown's law, and we can be at a lower level than we're at. Oh, you talk about no, the second tier. New hires fall. Third, under yeah, new hires fall under tier two. No, Yes, yeah, tier, tier two and not tier three. He's talking about tier three. I'm talking about tier three. Why do we want to do tier three? Because it's save us money in the long term. And well, there's there's the we'll turn into San Jose. We'll turn into a San Jose Police Department. Uh, I'm just explaining what we'll I will mean. be a training ground for other agencies. You're arguing the issue here. No, I'm not. I'm no. just saying that's that's my opinion. Okay. Okay. I'm so just that's explaining what I meant. That's what's going to be put. We can vote on all of that. So 19, okay. encourage installation of smoke and CO detectors. I mean, you think that's... Yeah, well, I, said it. I think that, it, again, it, I, I think we haven't done as good a job as we could do in the, in, in the district. Okay. Let me give you uh, just a real quick example of what I mean. I live up in the mountains. I had some... Uh, somebody comes and I had some work done. To get a building permit, I have to show that I have all these things in my building now. Um, I'm not sure we do that in our district. I'm just saying there's things that I think we could do if we really paid attention to it. So. Okay. 
um, upgrade staff qualifications to Blueprint 2020 standards? Yeah, I talked about this idea that having degrees for things, looking for our senior people to have at least bachelor's degrees and so forth at the captain levels and above and other, other areas. Um, just be aware. So every time this comes up, the, the staff then asks for money for getting their degree. So I mean, you still say no, but I mean, it just they see it as you know something you want to do. Then they come to us and say, "Will you spend the money for this?" Okay. And I know the answer has been no. Get your own degree, but okay. Professional um, development has kind of taken over the. 21, purchase major life life disability insurance policy for staff. Okay. That's, um, yeah, you already have a life insurance policy. We have life insurance as the chief officers. I believe, I know 2400 deferred, and instead of that, they wanted something else when we negotiated right. years ago for the Rick Tai agreement on uh, economic benefit. Remember that whole thing? Yeah. And they wanted. This is an item, though, that we've discussed a little bit at a board level, where if somebody were to die in the line of service, we don't have a major policy that would provide for their family and so forth. I'm talking about a million dollar plus kind of policy and so forth. Yeah. Uh, well, doesn't the fame they, they get his retirement? Yeah, that's, retirement. A, that's the one for, uh, I used to know the name of it. And also, it's up to 100000 150000 yeah. And there's so one that's provided by the state. Law enforcement, fire, any public safety person that's killed and wanted to do Correct. That. Yeah. So there are provisions. Yeah. But I have to ask Chuck about life insurance. I just, know, I just know down in Santa Cruz, when those police officers were killed, they were taking up collection to be able to pay for college for their dependents, yeah. and that was shameful. In well, my no, well, they, we discussed this year. Mm -hmm. The chief will remember, I raised this issue eight, nine years ago. Yeah. Uh, and I basically said exactly what you said. Let's not deal with this when we have a line of entry depth. Let's deal with it ahead of time. Um, and for reasons I don't fully understand, uh, I was never able to get um, consensus on that. Yeah, I don't know either. I and know and, and staff fact, has it. the interesting thing was that the firefighters themselves didn't place a very high priority on it. And my own reflection on it says that I think that, that was primarily a denial on their part saying it isn't going to happen, so don't worry about it. Um, so, yeah, let me look into it. That's a, that's probably more of it in Jenny's queue, because she'll know who on the cafeteria plan signed up for life insurance. Uh, and I think that what she might also find is that there are probably some opportunities now in terms of um, coverage that didn't exist before. Possibly. Yeah, you know, we don't have to go it alone. I suspect that there may well be um, some umbrella plans that we could participate in where we didn't have to sort of define the rules, et cetera. Well, sure, sure. uh, and one thing, because it, it's very unlikely, it's very inexpensive to do it. So, and you're right there. And then we don't have to feel guilty about having fundraisers for someone or making them a charity case. Well, well, sometimes a lot of those fundraisers, fundraisers doesn't mean yeah, that they are it's covered. It's their community. Why yeah. don't want to reach out? People. Well, it's also a reflection of the fact that by and large, line of service deaths are not, in my opinion, adequately covered by insurance. Well, I'll agree with you on that. Yeah, that is true. Okay. So, okay. we've met, we've done, yeah, let's vote. Okay. I can Here's say that you need health care issues. Hey, you know, it's it's now 1 o'clock in the morning, my time, guys. Would you stay up? I'll meet you for breakfast. Pardon? Just stay up all night. I'll meet you for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Rexy. Come on.
implement strategic plan. Okay, and then how many points do they have? It has 12. Okay. The third one is number 13, disaster planning. How many does that have? 11. Okay. And um, the next one is, oh gosh, I'm I. What did I tell you was, uh, num number two actually, I have to give you a new two. Okay. Uh, number two, six, fiscal health. Maintain fiscal health? You, you, maybe you could just squeeze it in there and change those other numbers. Uh, yeah, in other words, that's okay. No, no, just, just, no, just, just stick it in here. That's okay, because okay. these are the same points. So okay. the number four is gonna be number okay. 13. So, so number, number six then is, is 15. 15. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Number six has 15. Number one has 12. 12. Okay. Number 13 has 11. Okay. Um, and then, let's see. Then there are two tied. Okay. Um, with seven. Number five, service levels congestion. Okay. Has seven. Management succession has seven. Okay. And what's what number is management succession? Number nine, sorry. Okay. And that also has seven. Okay, so no. these then, are the top five. Right let, let me give you a couple more that have a lot, though. Okay. Number seven. And then number six. Wow. I'm sorry. Okay. Sir. I, I, I two number two seven. Two, oh, I'm two, sorry. Four, number six. Oh, it's it's two, two, yes, I'm sorry. It's number seven. seven. Oh, okay. No. Number, it it's number seven. And it um, has oh, once five. Once I get it moving around, it's okay. Okay. And number 18, pension plan has five. Okay. And then um, everything else has ones. There are three more with ones. I'll just tell you what they are. Number two. Oh, right the in. policies and number two has one. Yeah, I'm not because I, I think yeah, there's one, right? right yeah. yeah, because this is a lot right here. Okay. And what was the, what were the other two number ones? Policies and procedures and what? Policies and procedures. Oh, Come on. Um, management so team. Okay. No, which is number twelve, right. and then twenty upgrade staff qualification. Okay. But what we have here now, so Rex, we're getting back to our. So, this is a pretty wide range from 18 to 5, but all of them are important. So we have to decide, do we want to keep all seven of, seven of these as 2015 priorities, or do we want to... Which ones are the chiefs and which ones are the boards? None of them are the chiefs. So these are all the boards. Okay. So, and we can keep them all or cut it off at... No, you got to cut up. Seven things is... That's too much to do. You got to cut them down to maybe three to five things. Well, five things. There, okay, so there are two items that tied for number five, and that those items are um, number five, which is study service levels and congestion, and number nine, which is implement management succession plan. Well, the natural break, it seems to me, would either be after number four, that's one possibility. Right, right. Could you just put a line out there yeah. versus well, one I'm possibility? Gonna, and well, the, other, gonna, and the, the, the yeah. other would be after um, after numbers. Five. The two tied for fifth. Yeah. yeah. Those are the two possibilities. That's how so I look at the natural lines. Just, just to clarify, because you had wanted it just the board goals. Yes. I, I had the management succession plan and it's something the chief was already doing. Which and number is that? So that was the second number seven. I'm sorry, the second number five. Number nine. Yeah. Okay. And what's number and what's number five here? Number five is um, oh, service, study levels, service right. levels and congestion. So maybe those could be the chief items. Because you're in the middle of studying service levels and congestion and you're in the middle well, of Well we're in the beginning of it. But we've started it. Correct. Right. Yeah. So we could make this just the top four. The top four. Okay. And so that's number four. So, so number four. Mm -hmm. 
six. With the finalized long-term labor agreement, right. which would be the, the top priority. Number two, which is um, number six, is maintain fiscal health. Mm -hmm. Number three is implement strategic plan. And number four is improve disaster planning. Those would be okay. the top four. Okay. I think that works. So. I'm very concerned. No, go ahead, Chuck. This is the time to talk about it. What? What I'm going to say is going to be very critical, and I've heard people's feelings. I, I think the strategic plan document that we saw is just a pile of shit. And yeah. I no, say, I, 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 I can't, can't say disagree. any more nicely than that. Was the report on that? I don't know how you say implement. What other 120 things on it or something? Yeah, I mean, how do you just problem. implement 120 things? I mean, and that's, why is that the board? Yeah, so that's what Susan tried to fix. But right. We all know it wasn't. That wasn't exactly the ideal document. This is a strategic plan in a way for at least a year. Yeah, this at least, is like our, at least we know what the goals are. Well, how about this? How about one of our priorities is let's go back and take a look and redo the strategic plan to make it workable. One of the things I told Virginia was let me break up the strategic plan from a master plan because a lot of the things in the strategic plan are on schedules like apparatus, yeah. facilities. You, we, get, we can put calendars in place for all that stuff. I mean, it's all about money and the opportunity and the timeline. Well, that's not very strategic to me because it's, we follow a certain regimen, right? The rest of it's the other stuff. That's where you got to get strategic. How do you deal with traffic? You know, the M2. How do you get rigs there? I mean, what are we going to get up staff? We're going to put a squad in, sir. What are we going to do? Move well, a yeah. truck. I mean, those are the things that we got to figure out. Well, one of the things that we that's strategic. touch on in our in our strategic plan, but it's not really in there, is this new development because we don't really have a specific place that we start talking about downtown Pacific plan, the M2, what's going to do? They're going to build Remember, that's plan. next month when Tim Kramer comes to your meeting and gives you an overview. Yeah, but in, in, on the priorities, you don't really have a place that spells that out. No, but I would say that's strategic. <clears throat> well, let me say, to back up what Rex just said, I, I would also say that having implemented some sort of um, impact fees, or at least an impact fee yeah. structure, is a strategic thing. It's huge. Yeah. Right. So maybe one of the things that we should do is look at something that, that in, our, in the, our priorities is future development. So Chuck, you did funny things. You brought it up, remember? And you said how important it was, and then, you know, and it, but it does. But I know what I'm because doing. Because we took the, this list here comes from what was done a year ago, right? Before yeah. we were really not even a year ago, less than a year ago. Yeah, April of last year. Yeah. So I'm with you. I mean, that's why I'm doing it because not. But you getting everybody on the same page has not been. So why don't so why, so why don't we bring, why don't we why don't we let the chief address some of these things of get his comment yeah. and use this as just a preliminary indication of the things that are important. Right. right. And in February. And, and let come back and then we could finalize something after we hear from the chief. Yes. Yeah. I think that's that what was we're the based on. That. Sorry, Rex. Maybe either at the end of this month, the beginning of next month, have a spending session that, that's, that's, depending on your timeline, when you sit down, so you have a little more freedom for a study session. You can't no, necessarily right. make a decision. I, I, I wanted to have a study session at first. So, but but remember, think, you can't take action. That's right, that's thought. the problem. But you can turn around and you can have a study session if you have a special meeting afterwards. Not, not immediately after that, but to say this is stuff that goes on the agenda and you adopt it, whatever you decided in the study session. So, moving, okay, so I think that at this point, based on these top four things, just take a look at how these things fit. Oh, I already know how they fit. Could I suggest that maybe not just limit it to the top four, but maybe all of those and just if he has a response or I'm fine with that. I mean, Michelle's writing them all down. So, yeah. well, so Chuck, are you suggesting the top five or? No, I, I think I think oh. Rex is right that we have, in a sense, too many for us. But let's hear from the chief about them, yeah. and then go from there. Yeah, because you may want to shuffle. Are you okay with that, Rex? Sure. Okay. Long so line is be, you can't deal with twenty things. And I know. Have, a lot. We have what? Seven. One, two, three, seven, four, five, seven. six, seven, eight of them. It's too many. A clear direction. So, so 
um, the chief is going to look at the list that he's put together with the clear committee Correct. and see how these top seven priorities fit into or how his list fits into these top seven. So the top seven. Okay. Yeah. And just kind of, and this is just a draft, and so he'll bring that back next month, and um, we can even have that discussion here. Yeah. There's eight items on it. Well, it's, it's priorities yeah. are seven. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's a tie, but technically there are eight items. Does that work for you, Carol? Sure. Yeah, like I said, you know, whether you brought where you brought in my stuff tonight, would have actually probably been a longer conversation that occurred. And given how you know late we went. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. So we are done with yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. So Chuck yeah. or Rex, do you have any comments yeah, that you care to share yeah. 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 before we get off of this item? So we guys still got, uh, got agenda items. We just need public comment number three. Yes, <laughs> I know, I know that. And that's why I'm saying any other comment okay. So anyone, no more anyone? I no more uh, no more regular agenda items. So I'm here for public number three, public comment number three. And there is no one. Seeing that. Move to adjourn. Oh, well, then you have two calendar Second. items, right? Or not? No, no, no. Okay, we're good. Move to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Yeah. You got a quorum, so you can. All no, three voted for it. <laughs> Unanimous. That was the Thank easiest you. vote of the night. I know. Tell you what, I. I I appreciate the fact that Peter brings stuff up. I just don't want to go to war with it yet. Yeah. 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 Yeah.